Yeah, we are back at it. And we are truth seekers in this house. Let me tell you something. We seek the truth. Now, my testimony in studying, I've been studying for about 20 years, okay? And I'm the type of person that I don't like for someone to tell me something that's false. I don't believe what a person says. I have to go and read the book myself. So when somebody try to speak venom on your name, okay, if somebody try to throw salt in the game, somebody try to speak something bad about something, okay, I'm the type of person that I'm not going to take their word for it. I have to study it and I have to see it with my own eyes. And I've studied the Bible. I've read it from cover to cover. I would say at least 20 to 30 times in my life. I've even read the Bible cover to cover just being bored, okay? Also, I've read the Book of Mormon from cover to cover. I've read the Quran from cover to cover. I've read the Apocrypha. I've read Lost Gospels. I've read the book of Jasher, okay? I like to study for myself before somebody tell me something and try to make me disbelieve it. Now, the problem with it, what a lot of people is, is all somebody has to do is come and spit a little venom. All they have to do is say, yeah, 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 yeah. This, 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 that, that, that. And they just automatically believe it. Okay? But me, I'm the type of person that I seek truth. I have to study it. And with that being said, we will be talking about the book of Jasher after we get done with this debate. The problem with people is people do not study. They don't read the Bible from cover to cover. And majority of the people on this earth are followers. Christianity, Jesus dying for your sins and God authorizing it is the most dumbest and the most stupidest thing. Now that I have went back through it, okay, and looked at it. It is complete nonsense. It reminds me of a parable, and I want to get this scripture in the Bible. All right. And this is going to be, I believe it's going to be in the book of Matthew. This is going to be the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Verse 9. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So even with your evil self, you know that you wouldn't take your best child to sacrifice it for everybody on the planet, okay? And Christians, I mean, it's just that they scared to go to hell. They are so scared to go to hell, and they see all the energy, all the time, and money wasted in these crosses, in these churches everywhere, and Christianity being the biggest religion everywhere, and everywhere they go, they see a cross, they see Jesus love you. They absolutely are afraid to be like us and say, you know what? We don't believe Jesus died for our sins. That's complete nonsense. They are afraid to face judgment day, okay? Because they don't have true faith they have fear and Jesus is nothing more 
than fire insurance for them. That's all it is. It don't make no sense to them. God never said Jesus is going to die for your sins. But because it's the first thing that popped up, it is the most popular thing out there. They're like, and they too lazy. They spend all their time doing bullshit. Okay. And most of the Christians that are Christians are churchgoers, not Bible studiers. Not Bible studiers. I've ran across a lot of Christians in my life. And most Christians I run across don't know anything about the Bible. Other than John 3.16. Okay. Other than the New Testament. They are absolutely clueless to the Old Testament. They have no idea that God has never been about justifying the wicked. To save the wicked. He's never been about justifying the wicked to save the wicked. Okay? He's always been about justifying the righteous and condemning the wicked. Now we got to get back to where we was at with your boy Raekwon. All right? Now, let's go. No, the same way you want me to go to the Bible and say, where does God say Jesus will die for our sins? Is bro, that bro, 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 you losing bad. Now, we, we went we went off topic, okay? But you, you was trying to say that Jesus is not a prophet. There's no scripture. He is, bro. He, he is. He is a prophet. He is a prophet. He's been called a prophet. Tell me how. What do you mean by how? He's called a prophet. I never in my life. Listen, I never. He's called a prophet. Listen. Look at Matthew 21. No, Matthew 21 11. I was about to say I never in my life ran across anybody that ever said that Jesus wasn't a prophet. And I know most, most of y'all, y'all thinking like, dang, man, you could have really cut this whole thing short by going straight to the point. But I want y'all all to see people's Bible knowledge. And one of the reasons why I try my best to leave people's comments on my page, except if they're being very harassing. OK, and some people are really messed up and you, you just got to just block them. OK, and their comments are gone. OK, but for the most part, I try to leave everybody's comments on my page because I want everybody to see everybody's spiritual IQ. I want you to see where they are at biblically. And I went through this whole lengthy debate for y'all to see where the average Christian's Bible game is. All right, now we're going to keep going. And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. That's Matthew right. 21, 11. And the prophet right. said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. All right. This is in the Bible, bro. He's a prophet. Now, Jesus the multitude said, listen, listen, the multitude said, not, not, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The multitude, the multitude was saying that. Not his, not his people, not the not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because when Jesus asked them, who do you think I am, or who do men say I am? They said, some say the prophet, some say Elias. And then he said, whom do ye say I am? Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. And he said, Peter, um, uh, the Father has shown you this. Am I right or am I wrong? Bro, oh, man, you're going off. So regardless of what, if you think he's... Being the Messiah does not mean you're God, okay? And being the Messiah doesn't mean you're not a prophet. OK, when you are a prophet, specifically the Messiah, that's because you are a prophet. OK, so we're going to keep going. God, bro, if you think he's the son of God, Jesus, whatever you think he is, the Bible, the Bible calls him a prophet, too, bro. If you're going to believe all the other stuff, he's called a prophet. 
Now this is so, John so before, 4. But, listen, before Abraham was, I am. Why do you think the Pharisees wanted to kill him? Not because he was a prophet. They wanted to kill him because he was claiming to be God. No, he never once said. All right, it. now look. We talking about Jesus supposed to be dying for your sins. Okay, we looking for evidence coming from the Old Testament. And he is still harping on how Jesus is God. That literally took over most of the debate. Him arguing and wanting to drive this tent peg in my head to try to force me to believe that Jesus is God when Jesus is my brother. All right. So now we're going to keep going. All about that he is God. He tells you to worship God. Show me, show me a scripture. That's not saying. That's not saying nothing. That's not saying nothing. What do you mean? See, you don't have the understanding. I don't. I don't say nothing. That's not saying nothing. That's not saying I'm God. Listen. What was God's name in the Old Testament? What was God? He went name? by many different names. What was what was God's name in the bush? When did He spoke to Moses in the bush? I am. So anytime I so anytime in the Bible where a person says I am, that means they're saying they're God. When He spoke to when He spoke to Moses in the bush, when did He say His name was? It literally translates to Yahweh. I didn't ask you that, bro. I actually I am in the English. We're, we're talking about the English language, okay? He said He said I am right. So when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. And when Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and then they said, oh, you are not even 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham, then he said, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, I am. And I'm, I'm gonna make it Did he say, I am God? Huh? Did he say, I am God? He didn't have to say I am God. They know God for I am. So you're gonna so you're gonna take one little scripture and build a mountain on it. Let's get some more scriptures where Jesus says he's God. Okay, every man should die for their sin. And I listen, okay, since you said I'm taking one scripture, right? Let me show you another verse. Let me show you another verse, right? This is gonna blow your mind right here. This is gonna blow your mind. Right here. Blowing my mind is you don't believe that John the Baptist is what he was talking about. This is literally you're literally making you're literally making Christianity look horrible right now, bro. Can you turn to can you turn to um Hebrews chapter one verse five? I know the express image of his person. I know the scripture you're going to. Okay, I know exactly where you're going to. And if you go to chapter two, it calls Jesus your brother. It calls him your brother. It calls you. It calls Jesus your brother. Now, I went there just so we can go to the next chapter. So watch this. Listen, in the next chapter. Can you go to Hebrews? Can you go to Hebrews? Okay, yeah, man. Let's, 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 verse 5 so the audience can see. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, for unto which of the angels saith he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. And all of the angels, he said, and who maketh his angels spirit and ministers of flame, I mean, ministers of a flame of fire, but unto the son, he said, thy throne, O God. So God is speaking. And he's saying, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is thy is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hast hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy So son, God has a God, right? That's what you're saying. You're not understanding. No, no, just read that. No, read that. You took it. You're going to commit suicide. He just said, God, you're God. God. You just say God, you're God. So Jesus has a God, right? Jesus has a father, right? Father, yeah, yeah, he does. God. So God has a God. Yeah. So God has a God, and God is our brother, right? God is not our brother. God, Jesus. Let's go to the next chapter. I gave you a scripture. Okay, I gave you a scripture. Now I want to go to I want to go to Hebrews chapter. 
2, verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. So this is speaking of Jesus and his church. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Now the next verse. Say, now this is what it, so because so because Jesus I am still reading, man. You long with it. I'm still reading. Verse 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Who is that talking? Who is that talking? Jesus. So, Jesus is God to you, right? He's God to everybody. He's my God, your God. He's everybody. Bro, speak for yourself, man. Don't be disrespectful. I don't worship my brother. Okay, now you want to be respectful, you can stay on here, but you're not going to be disrespectful. He's your God. Your brother is your God. That's what you're saying. Okay, according to the Bible, according to the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, and the author is unknown. Paul didn't write this. The book of Hebrews, the author is unknown. Now, okay. it says that you, it literally says, Jesus is saying, I will praise you, God. In the midst of my brothers. So you're saying my, your God, okay, your God, Jesus, praises God in the middle of, in the midst of his brothers. That's what that's saying. That don't make no sense, okay? Apparently something is fishy going on in the New Testament. Now, I thought he just said Jesus is God and that God is not our brother. And then when I took him to Hebrews, I asked him, who is that talking? Who is that talking? It took him a while. And that's what I meant, that he was going to confess. He was like, yeah, that's Jesus. And what did it say? I will praise you, God, in the midst of my brothers. And in the scripture prior, he says, I'm not ashamed to call them my brothers all right so we're going to keep going now you're going to be hearing me i'm a little i'm a, i'm almost a little excited because of what he said all right but i'm gonna keep going a little bit now you're entitled to believe what you believe bro you know i'm not gonna be disrespectful but i don't believe that okay i don't believe the book of hebrews i believe the book of hebrews is some pharisee doctrine OK, they had strange doctrines concerning the resurrection. And I don't agree with Paul. OK, I believe Paul was sent. OK, I believe God uses people to mislead people. And I believe that God used Isaiah to mislead Israel. And I believe that God used Jesus to mislead a whole bunch of people. OK, God does do, do deception. And one day he put lying spirit in the mouth of all of Ahab's prophets. And he told Isaiah in chapter six to go and to blind the people and to make their ears heavy. OK, so a court, and if you go to Psalm 69, if you go to Romans 11, Paul talks about letting their table be made a snare, letting their eyes be darkened. And the Bible talks about Jesus being a stumbling stone. And I believe that God uses Jesus as a hook, as a fish, as a hook to misguide people. All right. Now, that's just what I believe about it. OK, everybody knows in the broadcast which you believe, okay? You thoroughly, you've made that point clear. But for us to conclude everything, did you have a scripture coming verbatim from God Almighty where he is consistently talking about sending Jesus to die for your sins? Bro, once again, if you understand scriptures God will not blatantly say someone is coming to die for your sin. Why? You, you will not find God, that. In God, the I thought you said that God. God won't say that someone is coming to blatantly die for your sins. But Paul is saying Jesus Christ died for your sins. And y'all believe God was speaking through Paul. Okay, so apparently Paul is another God. Okay, because he just said it. 
He just said it. He literally just he literally just punched himself right there. He said, God will not blatantly say it. You know why? Because God never had anything to do with anybody being sacrificed for another person's sin. That's just something God never did. All right. So now we're going to keep going. I was speaking through Paul when Paul said that. Paul says that in the New Testament. Paul said Christ died for your sins. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3. Okay, so who was talking? Was that God or Paul? The Holy Spirit speaking through Paul. So, okay, so you say, y'all said that's God. Okay, y'all said that when Jesus came on the scene, it was God. You're trying to play my game. No, I'm not. I'm asking you a question. You, you, You said that God will not blatantly say Jesus is going to die for your sins. How could you Let even me, say something like that? You don't even know me, God's mind to be able to say something like that. Let and me tell you what you're doing, right? This is what you're doing. If I go to those scriptures and point those out, saying, you know, someone will, God will die for us, Jesus will die for our sins, right? Then you are going to say, oh, where did God himself say that? Yeah, that's, that's, what, I was, that was, that's what I was pointing out. There's nothing not in the entire I mean, Old it, Testament... It, it, saying anything like that and what i'm telling you is right you won't find that in the old testament you only find that in the new testament after jesus has died already and rose from the dead for your sins hold on you said that you said that when they was taking communion he was telling everybody they was going to die he was going to die for their sins I said the people will not believe that. He told his disciples that. He did not tell Jesus. When did Jesus preach to the multitude? When did Jesus preach to the multitude saying, oh, we're, believe in me, I'm dying for your sins. He never once talked like that. He said that you would die in your sins, but he never once said, I'm going to die for everybody's sin. All right, y'all, let's get that scripture where Jesus tells the Pharisees they're going to die in their sins. Is he in a Danielite? No, nah, he ain't not in the Israelite camp. He's a Christian. No difference. You know what? You're right. Okay. The Israelites claim that they ain't Christians, but they are Christian because they believe that Jesus died for their sins. This is going to be John chapter 8, verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. So here you have Jesus telling the Pharisees that they are going to die in their sins. Now that was truth. Jesus was speaking truth right there. He was telling the truth because the because Moses told us that we all would die for our own sins. Ezekiel told us that we would die for our own sins. Jeremiah told us that we would die for our own sins. And here we have Jesus saying, where I'm going, you can't come. Where I'm going, you cannot come. He said, you're going to look for me. OK, but you can't come where I'm going. But he said, looky here. You going to die in your sins. All right, now we're going to get back to Raekwon. He did. He, he, he said he said he's going to die for sins. He's going to shed his blood for the remission of it, sins for men. That the way that's worded is it, difficult. That's not plain. So speaking, when Jesus was speaking, right, and he came back in spirit, what did he told all of his disciples? Go and now preach this gospel unto all creatures, right? Go and preach this gospel unto all creatures, right? So now... What gospel? Had to bring, huh? Did he say Jesus died for your sins? Yeah. He told him that, giving him the cup, which was his blood. He told the disciples that. You got to understand. So you're saying that the Apostle Paul the- is the only one who brought it out plain. When Jesus said, when I speak you, when I speak to you in the air, go and preach out on the housetops and go and preach out 
to all create. When did Jesus tell the disciples in their ears, I'm going to die for your sins playing like that? Nowhere. Nowhere. Okay. <laughs> they making it seem like, and if you really pay attention to the New Testament, Paul is the Jesus of the New Testament. Paul is the rabbi. Paul is the teacher of the New Testament. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Joseph in the Old Testament, was he a good man or a bad man? Good man. Joseph in the New Testament, was he a good man or a bad man? Good. He was a good man. All right. Now Joshua, which is Jesus. Joshua in the Old Testament, was he a good man or a bad man? Good, good man. Okay, Jesus in the New Testament, was he a good man or a bad man? Good. So all these men that have the same names are good men. I'm going to ask you a question. Here we got John the Baptist and we have the Apostle John. They were bad men or good men? Good men. They were good men. Now, King Saul of the Old Testament, was he a good man or a bad man? Bad man. He's a bad man. Oh, so the Apostle Paul of the New Testament, he is a very, very righteous God man, right? No. No! The Saul of the Old Testament was a bad man, and the Saul of the New Testament was a bad man. Now, I got another question. When Saul first started, was he a good man? No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes, he was a good man. He started off a good man, but he ended up a what? Bad man. He ended up a bad man. And Saul in the New Testament, he started off a... Bad. No. Good man. He started off a good man because he wasn't a Christian. He was under the law. He was killing those Christians. He was killing those witches. Christianity is witchcraft. Okay, when Saul first came on the scene, he was a good man because he did not believe in Christianity yet. But towards the end of Saul's life, when he became a Christian, did Saul become a good man or a bad man? Bad man. Bad man. So y'all got to be able to study the Bible. Now, I showed y'all that. Both of the Josephs was good. Both of the Johns were good. All right. Both of the Jesuses, even the hype, even the, there was a, a man by the name of Jesus. Okay. In the days of Ezra, who was with Zerubbabel, he was a good man. Okay. All these were good men. But Saul, he was a bad man. Okay, started off good, but ended up a bad man. And it's the same thing with the New Testament song. He started off a good man, but he ended up a evil man. And when we say evil, we're talking about evil. Because it's the same thing with King Saul. He was so evil, God quit talking to him. That's why he was going to the witches. Okay, and that was just like Paul. He was going to Christianity. So now we're going to pick back up. I had to throw that in there a little bit. What he spoke in their ears, right? The things that he spoke in secret, which is why you get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when they were saying these things in secret, like how he would speak the parables out to the multitude. But when they were behind closed doors, what did he say to them? It's given unto you to know the mysteries. Okay, so Jesus dying for everybody's sin was a mystery. Hold up. Hold up. I just caught him in a lie. He just said... That Jesus dying for your sins was a mystery. That's why he was doing all that talking. Now I'm about to straight up ask him, was Jesus a mystery? Now I'm going to back up a little bit so you can catch him. He being real crafty. Back up just a little bit. Here we go. Those doors, what did he say to them? It's given unto you to know the mysteries Okay, so Jesus dying for everybody's sin was a mystery. It wasn't a mystery, but... It wasn't? What did you say all of that for? You just talked about everything being told to the disciples as a mystery. Now, when I straight up ask you, now it's not a mystery. Mystery. No. Go ahead. 
So you're saying Jesus dying for everybody's sins, it wasn't a mystery. No, it's not a mystery. Is it a mystery? Because you know it. How is it a mystery? He just said well, first it. First of all, God, it's never spoken of in the Old Testament. Not one time. God never even mentioned Jesus' name in the entire Old Testament. Okay, not one time. He's not even mentioned. And he speaks against human sacrifice by the prophet Moses, whom a lot of Christians don't respect. Moses was the prophet whom all the other prophets had to stay in line with. That's why Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law of Moses. Jesus came to confirm the law of Moses. And the law of Moses was against human sacrifice. You don't have any scriptures coming from Moses because Moses wasn't about that. And God spoke to him face to face, mouth to mouth, but he never once said anything about Jesus dying for your sins, correct? How long did, how long did it take for Jesus to come into the world after Moses? It's like a thousand years. So you're saying that God doesn't announce people's names and, and, and before they come into the world? He doesn't announce people's names before they're born? He could have plainly announced that Jesus is going to die for your sins in the Old Testament. He didn't. He announced it will be a Savior. Bro, what, if, what do you think a Savior God means? calls himself a Savior. No. He, he just said that God don't even talk about it to the New Testament. Now he's talking about God announcing a Savior. All right? This guy has literally knocked himself out. Okay, spiritually, the referee is counting. He's doing the count. The guy is not getting up. Y'all seen a fight before? Have y'all ever seen a, a, a boxing match? Okay, when they going over to him and they and they count and they're counting and the guy is out and, and, and they trying to, you know, wave some ammonia over him so he can smell so he can. He is unresponsive. All right. This dude literally just knocked his own self out. We're going to go a few more minutes and we're going to be done. All right. Hopefully the next time we do this broadcast will be the last one and we can go on. Calls himself a savior. He calls exactly. us when he saved he Egypt, coming into when he saved Jesus Egypt, is God, him and the father is one. When right? he saved him the children the of Israel is out of Egypt, he called himself a savior. Like you try to pull that scripture about out of Israel, I've called my son out of Israel. He called Israel his son and he saved Israel out of Egypt. OK, so when you there's no scriptures plainly where he's telling you that Jesus is going to die for your sins. Nowhere. And do you know how much thicker the Old Testament is compared to the New Testament? There's nothing like that in there. He talks about a book being made a snare. He talks about tricking okay, people. Okay, so, okay. He talks about so tricking people. Psalms 45, right. Let's go to Psalms 45 um, verse 6. Right. Let's go to Psalms 45 verse 6. Go ahead. So tell me who is God talking to right here? I uh, Psalms. Psalms. He still want to talk about Jesus being God. Verse six. He just talked about that in Hebrews. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right. Christians don't want to talk about how God authorize Jesus dying for their sins because he never did. What a Christian want to talk about is how they believe Jesus is God. They believe God's creation is God. They believe something that God made is God. Now y'all understand why people will be misled by an antichrist because this right here this belief that Jesus is God going around, that's what's going to make it so easy for people to be deceived when a person comes on the scene and he makes himself look like Jesus. I mean, think about it. We got people right now claiming to be Jesus Christ in Africa, claiming to be Jesus Christ in Israelite camp movements here in the U.S. We have people claiming to be Jesus. OK, all these things right here, believing that a man is God is what's bringing the most deception to this earth. Scepter. That's talking about him. Paul took that and made it talk about Jesus. Who are you talking about? 
That's talking about God Almighty Himself. Okay, now listen, listen, listen. Let me speak. How can God be talking about God Almighty? Look, it is talking about God, which is Jesus, because when you look, no. He said, "No, listen. Let me speak. Thy throne, O God, is a is forever and ever. The scepter of Thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou hast loved this. I mean, Thou lovest righteousness and has hated." Uh, wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee. God is saying to God again, even in the Old Testament, that you keep trying to use, God is saying, therefore, thy God, thy God, right? Yeah, he's guiding you, man. God is God, and there's no God beside him, bro. This is the Old Testament, right? I'm proving to you that Jesus. That says Jesus. Where does that say Jesus at, bro? Where does it say Jesus? Where? Let me finish. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of mirth and aloes and... What does that have to do with anything? Casa out of the ivory places whereby they have made thee glad. Kings and daughters were born among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand, bitch, upon thy right hand, did stand the queen in gold of Ophrim, of Ophir, people's daughters, and consider and incline thy ear. Forget also thine own people in thy father's house, right? Now, who was God talking to when he said, therefore God, even thy God? You gotta understand, right? You gotta understand. That's not talking now. about Jesus, man. Listen, you gotta understand. Let me bring. Are you down. forcing Christianity me on, on on me or what, man? I'm telling you, I don't agree with that. I, and you still going to force it on you. I'm not trying to. That's what you do. I'm trying to. You you can't tell me Jesus is God, bro. I'm not going for it. I'm not going to put my son on the throne and say my son is God. Okay, when there's the Father. Explain. You gotta let me explain. I am. You want to have a Bible study instead of showing me the scripture where God is saying it verbatim. That's what y'all all do every time I put y'all on. Go ahead. I've been letting you talk this whole damn time. What you mean? Okay. Now, this is why God, <laughs> Jesus is God, right? God recognizes himself in different parts, right? Jesus is the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. No. Now, when you go to the very beginning of the book, let's go to the very, let's go to the very beginning of the book, right? Let's go to the very beginning of the book. All right. Now you can go to the Genesis one, verse twenty-six, right? Genesis chapter one. Any comments? Any comments? I'm gonna let some people give some comments. Well, first of all, what I see in him is um, he can't even pronounce names right for a fear. He said Ofer or something like that. And the other day we was listening, he mentioned other names wrong and you had to correct them. So he's, for me, he's just going around the bush. He's contradicting himself. It's like he thinks he gets it, but he don't. He's kind of lost. Actually, he's lost because he's not. He's contradicting the even the stuff that he's supposedly studying. He's saying, "Yeah, Jesus is God." No, it doesn't say this, and yeah, it does. It does say that. So he's like, "I know what I'm talking about." No, I don't understand how people wants to get online and debate if you're not studied up. You're just making yourself look dumb. And then the other day, you're going to come with your tail be between your legs. That's what I see. All right. That's right. And I played games. I wanted to keep going because I want people to see where people's knowledge is. All right. And Psalms, okay, those were given to David. And you got to pay attention to when you read the book of Psalms. And he literally took a scripture out of context. Jesus is not mentioned in the book of Psalms. Is he a secret God? Why is he Why is he a secret God? Now, I'm going to show y'all something real quick. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm gonna, and I'm going to let y'all. And we, we're going to be done. We're going to be done. We're going to pick back up. 
Yeah, I had I had enough. I had enough of hearing him. I can only hear him for so much, and I get I get agitated just listening to him. So what I want to do is I want to show y'all a scripture, and this is going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter seven. Is Jesus a secret God? Is he a secret God? Why couldn't God announce him in the beginning if he really was a God? Look what God says about Moses. This is going to be Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. That's what God says about Moses. Where does it say, I made Jesus a God? There's no scripture like that in the entirety of the Bible. Okay? And when God made Moses a God to Pharaoh, guess where Joshua or Yahshua or Yeshua was? He was a servant to Moses. He was a minister to Moses. Every time Moses went on the mountaintop with God, guess where Joshua was at? He was at the foot of the mountain. He couldn't go up. Come on, man. God wanted to make it plain, okay? Moses, I made my prophet. I made him a God to Pharaoh, but he is the humblest man on the earth, okay? And he knows that I am God, okay? And Moses was against human sacrifice. That's all we have today. Now it's about time for us to get in these chapters. Is y'all ready to get in it? Yes. All right, let's go. Exodus 7, verse 1. 